Time to finish this tavern build. Everybody, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, part two of our tavern build, we're gonna finish this thing up. Um, the plans for this build are in the description below at Drive Through RPG. I drafted those up and put them there for you guys free to download to follow along. Uh, a lot of the crafting materials uh, that I used for this build, you'll also find links to in the description below if you're interested. With that, let's finish this build and let's get crafting. All right, so we're gonna start by taking an X-Acto knife and cutting out all of the individual planks of wood for the door, and then uh, define those even better by tracing them out in a pen. And then we'll use a sculpting tool, and uh, we're gonna draw a knot in the wood here and some fine detail grain. And then uh, you can check this link out above um, to see how I make these door handles here. Um, I basically make them out of uh, leftover green stuff. Uh, and I always have a whole bunch of these on hand. They're real handy. Um, I love having them, easy to make, fun to make. Check that video out. All right, so now we're going to um, add in um, some uh, door bracing here. Um, I also show you how to make those in that green stuff video. Now just some detail with some pinholes here to look like uh, nails holding it in. All right, now we're using the plans that you can get for free on DriveThruRPG. Head over there, print them out. They're in the uh, description below for that link. Uh, and then uh, trace that out. And make this cut real slow. You wanna be cutting at about a, a one and a half on the Proxon. That way you can get a nice round cut. Anything too hot, it's gonna move around on you. It's gonna burn more than you really want. And cut that in half and add some wood texture. Now we're going to add some toothpicks into every one of these supports here. So this thing is going to be rock solid when we're done. So cut all those out, insert all those in there, glue them in with some uh, hot glue or some um, tacky glue if you want. Now each one of these uh, little pegs here is going to get some tacky glue. And then press them all down in place. Let me know what your uh, glue of choice is for working with XPS. I know some people like hot glue, some prefer tacky glue or just regular PVA. Mod Podge, there's a whole bunch of them out there. So clean the excess uh, glue off. Now we're gonna go back while that's uh, drying and we're gonna go ahead and paint uh, all these windows up with some brown and then use the stencil, um, again from Drive-Thru RPG, um, to mark out that round window. And that's gonna be a pretty thin window. Um, I cut those out at uh, a little less than a, a quarter inch. And again, you wanna be at a real low temperature to make that round cut. All right, then use uh, an X-Acto to cut out the uh, spot here for the glass. And then some hot glue to glue the uh, window frames onto the house. And once the windows are on, you can then go ahead and finish the uh, the timber bracing and then gluing on uh, all the windows here that we made from the first part. They're going to fit real nice because we followed the plans. Alright, now we're making just a little roof I guess for the uh, dormer window. We'll add some wood texture to that. 
And then uh, I wanted to make it come out at a little bit of an angle, so it just wasn't this straight thing that came out. A little bit more interesting to look at. So just holding that in place, I'm going from the base of the window, angling out to the peak. And it's going to look something like that once you're all done. And cut it out with uh, an X-Acto. And we're going to glue that frame back onto the window and then cover the whole thing in that uh, dormer roof so you won't see that joint. And then we'll hot glue that right to the roof. Now we're going to glue some shingles on. Um, I'll probably do a video on how to make these shingles, but basically, you know, you don't want to take like a half to three quarter inch piece of XPS, draw out that funky design you see there for the shingle, and then cut that out on the Proxon. Um, so that'll be at like, you know, five eighths of an inch thick. That's how thick uh, the XPS is. And then you're going to shave that down at about less than a, an eighth of an inch, probably like a sixteenth of an inch and you'll get like six or seven uh, sheets of shingles out of it. And give it some wood texture. And now we're printing off, uh, or cutting, a uh, timber for the roof. Main support, we're gonna put a little uh, round texture in there, like some round uh, end of a log for grain. And then cut the top of the roof nice and flat. And uh, hot glue some toothpicks in there. I'm going to stick that timber right on top after we had a whole bunch of hot glue. And again, that's not going to go anywhere once it's on. Now we're going to glue some uh, timbers to the front to cover up the edge of the uh, shingles. And then we'll just cut the end to fit. And then we'll do that uh, to the other side of the house as well. Now I'm drawing in some, uh, some stonework here. When we do the plaster, we're going to leave these exposed to make it look like the plaster has come away from the building. And now uh, you'll see for me, for the windows, I use a little uh, Vallejo um, liquid uh, water effects. I'm not a big fan of the way this came out. Um, it kind of takes a lot of layers and it really got sucked into the, the piece. So kind of I'm looking for a new way of uh, doing the windows. Now we're working on a chimney. I just take a, a big pen, a uh, pencil, cut the top off, hot glue in a uh, little uh, skewer there to stick it into the top of the chimney and I took a little green stuff and just made like a little bracing around the top of the chimney just to make it look like it's not a pencil and these actually look really cool once they're all painted up and we're gonna rinse and repeat do that for the second one all right now I use this um, patch light patch I don't recommend using this brand it's super light and fluffy and it was an absolute nightmare <laughs> to actually get to stay on you'll see it keeps wanting to pull off there I ended up just using my finger to kind of smash it in there to get it to stay there's other types of compound joint compound you can use where it'll hold up a lot better and result you know came out nice I like it but like I said it was a pain to work with and you want to leave that rock there exposed again it's supposed to look like that stucco has come off from the building <clears throat> and these uh, sculpting tools come in real handy when you're working with this to remove excess material you want to make sure it's not the same um, thickness as the wood that way the wood stands out and here we're just using a wet q-tip to kind of move it around and uh, remove it away from the stone That's what it looks like all done. 
Now we're gonna work on some stairs. You wanna do a one by three, a one by two, and a one by one. Add some wood texture to it. And then I took some uh, like eighth inch pieces of foam that are cut just a little bit bigger to look like treads on top of the stairs. And then we'll go ahead and hot glue all that together. Then glue the treads on. And now I'm just drawing in some planks here. And then uh, just one magnet in the corner. Um, I decided to use the magnet that's already in place on the uh, first floor. And uh, cover that in a little bit of hot glue just to keep it in place. And that's all you really need. These magnets are super strong. You can find a link to them in the description below if you're interested. And now I'm just adding a little bit of uh, texture to that stonework. Now we're gonna pop out, this is the bottom of the chimney, because as you can see here, we're gonna add some stones and some sand uh, to make it look like some burnt out logs in the fireplace. And now with a little bit of hot glue, we're gonna add some tiny little strips of XPS between each uh, one of the spans here for the banister. I think that really makes it look cool. Nice little bit of detail there. And just use the edge of that sculpting tool to pull off any of the excess hot glue and a couple of nail holes in each one. And of course some woodwork. I like to put some over exaggerated uh, wood grain on these for the fine detail. Now it's time to mix up a big batch of Mod Podge and uh, hit everything up. All right, now we're gonna do the shingles for the roof. We're using a little bit of uh, burnt umber and uh, just some, like a really, obviously sky blue color. Mix those together and it came up with this muted blue for the roof. And that's gonna turn uh, pretty gray by the time we're done. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and take a tan color for that stucco and paint all the stucco on the house. And now a little bit of that chocolate brown for all the uh, timber work. And some graphite gray by Deco Art for the chimney. Then we're gonna go ahead and use that um, same brown from earlier on all the woodwork here for the floor. Um, and you can just vary these up, obviously, different color timber. I, I use a little different color here for the, the banister. Now we're gonna go ahead and just do a light, lighter brush over the uh, that stucco color. Then we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a light dry brush over everything. I think I'm using a uh, like a linen color here, real light. This is a uh, honey brown that I'm using, and it really you can see the. Uh, the grain stand out with that dry brush. And then uh, we're gonna do a uh, pewter gray over the uh, chimney. You'll see there the chimney, some of those stones I did in a little bit of a, a tan brownish color too to, to break that up a little bit. And now we're gonna paint the uh, metal pipes coming out of the chimney top. And this came out really awesome. I love this part. This is like a sunburst color from uh, Vallejo. 
mixed with some brown and then uh, I watered it down and made almost like a wash out of it and then uh, washed uh, all the doors and uh, you gotta wait till the end and uh, see how this thing looks it came out so awesome all right now I'm just gonna darken up that uh, that pewter gray and start light brushing uh, dry brushing the shingles here and you really just want to go down you don't want to go down and up when you're dry brushing that and this is a linen color that I'm dry brushing the stone in again just go in a downward motion the way the light would be hitting it and now we're gonna go ahead and use a, a brown wash and wash everything that's uh, brown on the entire uh, piece here and the same goes for the stucco you want to wash all that you'll see the stonework right there I painted that gray and now we'll use a black wash to uh, do the roof That same black wash is going to go over all the work on the chimney. And then a little bit of black wash on all the metal work. And then a light, one more light final dry brush over the whole thing of that linen color really makes the uh, stonework pop on that. I'm going to do the same linen dry brush on the stairs and on the banister and on all the woodwork. Notice I'm just doing the tops of the sills and everything. Alright, and then the final light dry brush on the shingles as well. And then that top timber we're going to do the dormer and all these edge pieces. Make sure you dry brush everything. All right, now I'm taking a little bit of uh, silver, Vallejo silver, and I'm just touching the top edge again where the light would be hitting all this metal work. And it's all about contrast here. You'll notice I'm gonna do all these little holes, uh, rivet holes, just the bottom where the light would be hitting really makes them all stand out. And I'll leave a link here up top uh, to show how I made all these uh, door handles. They're made out of uh, green stuff. Now I was sitting outside having a barbecue with my family and uh, we just put a whole bunch of charcoal in the barbecue and I had a whole bag of this powder left over and I'm like, man, this would be awesome all around uh, the chimney and the roof. So I ended up just putting some glue on it and putting a bunch of soot all over it. I think it came out pretty good. And notice I just put it on one side, pretty much like the way the prevailing wind would be coming from. And this was kind of an afterthought, um, and I figured what the heck, I'll video it. Um, for the campaign I'm working on, this building I needed, um, I needed some rooms upstairs, so I made some interior walls. So right now I'm just duplicating this exterior wall and now I'm going to make a whole bunch of interior walls that are going to be held together by these magnets. This is pretty
pretty much how it works and goes together. And these magnets are amazing. They're so powerful. I love using them. Yeah, there'll be a link to them in the description below. And then the inside, I painted a couple rooms green, a couple rooms maroon. After I was done, I noticed it was kind of like a Christmas theme going on here. But I still like the way it came out. All right, now for some final detail. I took some cooking twine, stripped it down to two to three, and even some like four and five pieces, you know, of twine thick, because it usually comes in about 10 or 15 strands thick. Painted some tan, some green. Now I'm twisting them together. I'm gonna make some vines. They're gonna go up the side of the tavern. And just a little tiny dab of super glue will hold these together. And wrap it around however you want. All over the place, they're vines. So they grow however they want. So just go nuts with it. You're gonna see I pretty much went nuts with the next part. Um, I couldn't really find um, vines online, so I ended up making this myself. I wanted some type of like a, an English like ivy, so I ended up using the uh, green stuff for all leaves and made my own. This took quite a while. Uh, each one of these leaves is dabbed in a little bit of super glue and then stuck on the vine. Um, when I was done, the glue kind of saturated the leaves and it cured really strong. I was really, really happy with that. Um, but again, this, this took uh, quite a while. And that's kind of the look. We're mixing in, obviously, that in the middle there. I got a dead vine. We've got some mostly green with a little bit of brown in there. And that's what it looks like. All right, everybody, that's it. Our tavern's all set and ready to go. Leave us some comments down below. Let me know what you guys might have made for changes and modifications throughout the build. Hopefully, if you guys followed along. Also, up here, I'll leave a link where you guys can go through if you enjoyed this video, and you can check out some other larger builds, like a windmill that I did uh, a few weeks back. And with that, please like, share, and subscribe if you liked the video. And until next time, I'll see you guys around.